Good day, friends. On this, the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. It's a time when we begin worship, a time when we are in God's presence, especially as we deal with the theme of being in God's ever-loving arms. I call your attention to the announcements for today and for the week. You will see that the reopening task force is making arrangements as well as making plans for potentially opening the church in the near future. And you will hear more about that from the session as it meets together. So please know that the fellowship that we have here at Church of the Covenant continues to move forward, even as we deal with this pandemic and also go through our services using our interactive bulletin. But welcome to service this day as we glorify God. We ask that you look at our joys that you might have and share them with one another. Also look at the concerns, especially those people that are on the prayer list this week, knowing full well that they are dealing with different issues of health, loss of loved ones, and also issues of, of end of life kind of concerns. So please, let's pray for all the people Let's pray for our world. Let's pray for each one of us as we continue to glorify God, even in this difficult time of pandemic. At this time, you're encouraged to light a candle for the duration of the service as a symbol of our community of faith. And we do this now during the celebration of community. Please join me in the call to worship. Has it been a rough week for you? Some way it has. Do you feel burdened and exhausted? Yes, this is supposed to be a season of relaxation, but our spirits feel dragged down with cares and concerns. Bring your cares to the Lord, for God will surely offer healing balm for you. Thanks be to God who listen to our cries and heals our spirits. Let us worship the God who surrounds us with love and comfort.
When we pass through deep waters or go through times of trial, the Lord our God is with us. Trusting in God's unending grace, let us confess our sin together. God, when life is good and plentiful, how easily we extol ourselves for our good works, forgetting that all goodness comes from you. When times become difficult, how quickly we turn to blame, crying out, why have you forsaken us? Forgetting that you are always there in the midst of our fear and pain. Forgive us for not fully believing that in good and in bad, you are God. God with us, God in us, God before us, God through us. Help us to truly live as we profess, even as we silently confess our sins. Do not fear, says the Lord, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. friends, how are you today? Today, Reverend Medina will be talking about the everlasting arms of God. In the psalm that we will be hearing, it says, The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. This is a promise to us that God is always with us, even when we are having a difficult and challenging time. When I read this psalm, I thought of a poem that helped me in many, many times of trial. The poem goes like this. The title is Footprints. One night I dreamed a dream. As I was walking along the beach with my Lord, across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. For each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand. One belonged to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand. I noticed that at many times along the path of my life, especially at the very lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you the most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. 
Never, ever, during your trials and testings, when you saw only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. This is the poem, and please remember that when you are having troubled times and challenges, that God is always there to carry you through your times of need. In the place of prayer today, I would like to share the sound of the ocean. Close your eyes and listen to the waves as you thank God for his love and his surrounding presence. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first scripture lesson is from Psalms 145, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. This is the word of the Lord. The gospel lesson is from Matthew eleven sixteen through 19 and 25 through 30. But to what will I compare this generation it is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by their deeds. At this time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, 
and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Good day, friends, and welcome to worship on this Sunday. Well, the prophet Isaiah says this about God. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. Well, Anthony Showalter was leading a singing school in an Alabama church in 1887. When he returned to his boarding house room one night, two letters awaited him. Both were from former students and both told of the recent losses of their wives. He wrote back seeking to comfort the young men in the midst of their grief. But what to write? When he came to the end of each letter, he wanted to include a Bible verse. He picked Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 27, which reads, the eternal God is thy refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. Well, he pondered the words of that last verse as he penned them into the letters and the lyrics of the chorus of leaning on the everlasting arms of God came to his mind. He wrote to his friend, Elisha Hoffman, explaining that he had a chorus, but no verses. Mr. Hoffman wrote back with the rest of the words of this famous hymn. Samuel Duncan, a student of, and nephew of Mr. Showalter, was given the class assignment to write the tune for this poem. The piece was published under his uncle's name in the book, Glad Evangel for Revival, Camp and Evangelistic Meeting Hymnals. The first verse and refrain give us a sense of how one can lean into God's care and love. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mind, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. As people of faith, the Christian faith, there have been times in our journey that we have come through rough times and good times, fun times and sad times, smooth times and struggling times. Like the times we find ourselves in today during this pandemic and social reckoning. There are also opportunities to get through some tough situations with the prayers and support of others. Sometimes a person remains alone within their eternal struggles without anyone knowing. When we find that one, we seek to help, support, and pray for them. It is hard sometimes because some folks just don't want anyone to know. Yes, loneliness is real and strikes at the very heart of a person's life. Yet God knows everything that is going on in our lives. Everything. God knows everything. There are times when a person is stuck in a descending spiral of emotional struggles that cause a person to lose themselves within oneself. The reaching out for support in the medical community can assure a person of ongoing care. Even in that care community, one can find others who will be with them through it all and give them companionship. Over it all, God provides care and support for any one of us who struggles with depression, psychological challenges, health concerns, and loneliness. Within this congregation, there are many opportunities of caring, presents, flowers, and cards, as well as visiting with others and calls to members. So the actions and ministry we live out here sustain the surrounding arms of God throughout the community and with, with each other. During this time at Church of the Covenant, the deacons have intentionally reached out to members of the church 
to assure them of care and love. This is another way in which the church is letting them know that they're, they're precious and we need to stay up with them during this time. I thank the members of the deacon board who are there for you and also those who reach out who are not on the deacon board. Caring is very important. We all need to be a part of that. Well, the song of praise in Psalms chapter 145 helps us to acknowledge a God who is always undergirding us. There is a heartfelt sense of God's everlasting arms supporting the psalmist, King David, and us. The passage shows us the compassion of the Creator God that David experienced. When he said, the Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. God is ever disposed to show favor and full compassion whenever ministry and misery is present. Our loving God is slow to anger and full of great mercy and steadfast love. In other words, God shows us the fullness of goodness and divine nature. Well, David continues to write, the Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that God has made. This marvelous compassion is for all of God's children. When we claim to be God's creations, we affirm the existence of a gracious and loving God in our lives. David sings, all your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. Like David, the faithful acknowledge with gratitude that the Father Creator is good to all people. The word faithful in some versions of the Bible means saints. It is for the compassionate ones who experience mercy from God. David professes, they shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Well, the faithful are to speak of God's glory and mercy to all people. That is our charge as well, to share the goodness of God and to share the mercy of God to all people. So yes, it is our calling to advocate for God's glorious kingdom by er introducing God's wonder and splendor and power to all people regardless who they are or the color of their skin. David continues to affirm that the promises of God live throughout every generation while always holding up those who are weak for whatever reason and need a healing hand. One's weakness can be strengthened by a gracious and loving God. Well, the story is told of one of God's faithful missionaries named Alan Gardiner, who experienced many physical difficulties and hardships throughout his service to the Savior. Despite his troubles, he said, while God gives me strength, failure will not daunt me. In 1851, at the age of 57, he died of disease and starvation while serving on Picton Island at the southern tip of South America. When his body was found, his diary lay nearby. It bore the record of hunger, thirst, wounds, and loneliness. The last entry in his little book showed the struggles of his shaking hand as he tried to write legibly. It read, I am overwhelmed with a sense of the goodness of God. Indeed, God's presence holds up the faithful Christian who acknowledges the Almighty's goodness, love, and mercy. The everlasting arms of God are always there for all people, for you and me. We just need to remember that God is the one who extends love to each of us as well as to all people. God reaches out to all of us. 
Friends, we all believe that Jesus was sent to love us and not condemn us. The Lord came to embody love throughout his ministry to all who came to him. Jesus always made it a point to show people the way of God's kingdom through unconditional love and acceptance. Our Savior showed us that he was and is present with all people who want to know him. Through the Lord, we see how God works and God cares. The wisdom of God is made known to those who are infants or simple people, and not only to the religious leaders who think themselves wise and intelligent, as one commentator recalls. Well, it says in the Gospel of Mark that Christ is the one who teaches that God is the only one who is the eternal and sovereign one who dispenses all things to all people. In this belief, God gives the caring and loving Jesus for us to choose and emulate. My dear sisters and brothers, Christ openly invites all who choose to accept his lordship and follow him. When we take upon ourselves the goodness of God's love and grace, the invitation from the Savior is complete. As Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. As disciples of Christ, you and I are given the choice to follow him and embrace his loving care. Our Lord invites you and me to bring all of our worries, concerns, and burdens of heart, mind, and soul to the comforter of life. The Lord makes our life more certain of his companionship with us. Jesus reminds us, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Friends, our Savior calls us to seek him in everyday life, no matter the situation or the circumstance. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, and will never leave us alone when we experience unconditional love. God is always holding us and surrounding us with all the encompassing and everlasting arms as we go through the many opportunities and challenges of discipleship, life, and health. Yet we can affirm that God continually embraces us as we move through faith and life. So, we are always reminded of the last verse of leaning on the everlasting arms, how our lives are guided by an ever-present God who surrounds us and holds us near with care and love. That verse reads, What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. <clears throat> Leaning on the everlasting arms. Yes, God is holding us and surrounding us with love. So let us remember that as we go through each day and each night, that our great God is always there for us and always embracing us, even when we feel alone, even as we go through this time of pandemic, God is surrounding us. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving us and caring for us as we go through different types of struggles every day. It is wonderful to know that you love us unconditionally. May our love resonate in life as we too extend grace and care to others. And we do this in Jesus' name. And let us all say, Amen.
Friends, we come to that part of the service when we are able to give to the church from our means. You will find a link to the right of this section that will take you to the online giving page. I encourage you to give generously to the life of the church as it continues to witness to Jesus Christ in this community as well as throughout the world. So please give generously. Let us now receive our tithes and offerings and bring them to the Lord. 